Why do people even argue with narcissists? Once we realize someone is toxic, we should be able to just walk away and know the person is a complete idiot and any conversation is a waste of time. But it's very difficult to just walk away and not try to argue, not try to get our point across, not try to reframe a point of view or explain that something was unfair, explain that something wasn't nice, explain that something hurt us. So there are a few valid reasons why we might want to argue with someone. Then there are some invalid reasons or reasons to not argue with a person. But then there's the third situation where even though there are no valid reasons, we still try to argue with them. And the last one is indicative of a hopium addiction. It's when we are addicted to hope and it is just another type of addiction. The thesis of this video is that Many arguments we have with narcissists are simply a symptom of hopium addiction. And that is actually what I'm trying to cure in this video. So please let me know in the comments if anything has changed from your point of view by the end of this video. So regarding the valid reasons to argue with a person, first, we have to know that the person has changed their mind in the past. If they have changed their mind, it might make sense to compare points of view because there's a possibility they might change their mind in the future. The second one is that they have proven to us that they care about understanding our point of view. In other words, they ask us questions. They try to understand where we come from, even if they disagree with us, but they try to understand our logic. And the last one is that we believe that a lack of information is the problem for the disagreement. So if we can share different information or relevant information or help someone process the information more accurately, that might change their point of view. Inversely, the reasons why there is no point to argue with someone is first of all, that they are dogmatic, that they never change their mind. They never change the point of view. If they never will change the point of view, why bother arguing. If they refuse data, if they refuse facts, if they refuse to concede that maybe they're not 100% right 100% of the time, why would you argue with them? They're already telling you that they will not change their opinion, regardless of what you say. So why waste your breath? Secondly, when they are not interested in seeing another point of view, if they're not interested in seeing either point of view, it's the equivalent to you trying to have a conversation with them and them putting their fingers in their ears going la 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 la, not listening, and then accusing you of something that is completely unrelated to your point of view. If this is how they proceed, there is no point in having an argument with them. And the third one is that they are not intellectually capable of considering another point of view. And this is actually more common than we can imagine. We'd assume that it is possible for an outsider to observe two sides of a debate, maybe agree with one, but be able to consider that the other one has some merit. Doesn't mean agreeing with it, but simply understanding that people who have this point of view, it makes sense to them. And you can see both logics. You simply think one is more persuasive than the other, but both have more than 0% merit. If they are not capable of doing this, if they believe that their point of view is the only point of view that is valid, then don't assume that they are capable of entertaining two different thoughts at the same time. If their brain is not capable of doing it, why would you try to make them do it? Because the brain isn't capable. And tying this back with the valid reasons, when have they proven in the past that they are intellectually capable of considering two different points of view? of listening to another person and understanding their point of view. If they've never done it in the past, why would you assume they'll do it in the future? Now, the third reason for arguing is the hopium addiction. This is typically when we are in denial of reality. When we observe reality and we see that they have never changed their point of view and it doesn't seem that a lack of information is the problem, when we see they're dogmatic, that they're not interested in somebody else's point of view or they're not intellectually capable of doing it or we've got no reason to believe that they are intellectually capable of doing it, when despite all of this, we still hope that they can change their point of view, that is hopium addiction. There is no rational reason for them to change their point of view, which means that 
We're arguing with them not because of something that they do, but because of something inside of us. Because a difficulty we have with accepting reality. We can't blame them for being the way they are, because that is the way they are. But we can recognize that we struggle to accept reality, and maybe this is the key. Let's explore this in a bit more depth. Why do we do it when it objectively makes no sense because we know that the probability of the narcissist understanding anything or showing empathy or even just not using the information to hurt us in the future, the probability is really close to 0%? Why do we do it? I think there's a pretty straightforward reason, which is simply we still hope that it might work. We're not willing to accept the reality that the person is not going to understand and doesn't want to understand and will use it against us, provided that we still hope we don't give up, even if it's futile, even if it's exhausting. What I suggest we do in these situations is we observe what it's costing us, costing us in terms of time, in terms of energy, in terms of focus, have this in mind. And then think, what else could I be doing with the time, the energy, and the focus if I wasn't trying to do something that had nearly a 0% probability of working? What would I be doing? That is what we are sacrificing. We're not moving forward with our life. We don't have peace of mind. We're not able to be constructive, to be successful, to develop healthy new relationships. So ask ourselves, if this is what I'm sacrificing, why would I believe I deserve any of this? If I believe I deserve it, I'm not going to sacrifice it. I'm going to sacrifice the waste of time, the dead weight. This does mean being willing to let go of the past and move forward and mourn, to feel the sorrow, feel the sadness. But that means accepting to close the door and move on, accepting that something didn't work, accepting that it's part of the past, accepting to let go. We could argue that it's difficult to let go of narcissists for a variety of reasons, but we could also argue that some of us find it difficult to let go of anything difficult to let go of hope, difficult to let go of dreams, difficult to accept that the things that we were hoping to get were just never credible in the first place, were never plausible, and we got duped. We got scammed into believing it was there, scammed into believing it was a possibility, until we're willing to accept that we got scammed and that we acted in a childish way by delegating responsibility to someone who was untrustworthy because we didn't recognize who was trustworthy and who wasn't. Until we do that, it's possible that we don't move forward and it's likely to happen again. And maybe what we really have to let go of is not the narcissist who's a complete waste of space and completely irrelevant. Maybe what we have to let go of is the hope that someone out there will be able to give us what it is we're dreaming for. And what are we dreaming for? Maybe we want to keep the responsibility of a child and have the freedom of an adult. Maybe part of it is the difficulty growing up, accepting that no one out there really owes us anything, that our life is our responsibility. We are the ones with skin in the game, and it's up to us to decide when enough is enough we're going to stop having people take advantage of us and we want to get our life back on track and we are going to make it happen. That means giving up the victim narrative, stop feeling sorry for ourselves, stop hoping that someone is going to come and save us and rescue us. Because as long as we hope that someone is going to come and save us and rescue us, we still remain vulnerable to toxic people. And as long as as we are willing to argue with a narcissist, we still have a little bit of hope that the person in front of us is the person who could come and save us. Because after all, wouldn't it be nice and practical if they were? It would be so nice. It would be lovely. It would be such a relief if they were. But let's see how things work out. When we argue with narcissists, it's exhausting, it's tiring, and they always play around with us, but they can only do that if we are willing to play the game with them. When we stop arguing, when we see them for what they are, 
and we stop trying to rationalize and argue and get them to see our point of view when we accept that that is not going to happen and we accept reality, as sad as it might be, but we grow up, we let go, we move on, then we have a chance of getting our life on track. And who knows what beautiful things await us when we're ready to receive truly beautiful things instead of hope that a lie is going to look the part even though deep down inside we know it's fake. That's why being willing to argue with a narcissist is a sign that we need more healing. That's why, instead of arguing outwardly with a narcissist, we can have the conversation in our head. And when we understand how they think, and when we have a model that helps us anticipate what they will say, because we understand the logic and we can see through them, because they don't really have a psychology, they don't really have a personality, they're like some kind of computer virus, they all react the same way, give and take some small details. Once we see this, we're no longer dependent on them to try to reclaim our sanity. They're a computer virus and we're humans. We don't understand how they function. We think something might be wrong with us. But when we understand what they are really doing, we understand how we think, and we can deconstruct all of the toxic ideas and ideologies that they use, we get our life back in track and we no longer even can be bothered to argue with them. We show them ideas, up to them to embrace the truth if they want to, or to reject it as they probably will. As long as someone wants to live a life of lies, there's no point offering them an alternative path of truth, because they don't want it.